with the rise of this machine model of human beings, a new idea of how to change society began to emerge. Not through politics any longer, but by adjusting how well the individual machines functioned. The technicians of this new idea would be the psychiatrists and the drug companies who would free people from the terrible anxieties inside themselves. But what it would lead to would be a new form of order and control, not defined by the old political elites, but by the objective power of numbers. I just found myself constantly worrying. I couldn't, I just couldn't stop. My hands were shaking, and I was sure that people were looking at me and watching my hands. These college students didn't know it then, but they were each experiencing the symptoms of an anxiety disorder. Panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, social phobia, and post-traumatic stress disorder. This year, 23 million Americans will suffer from one of these anxiety disorders. They're the most common mental illness in the country, and they can attack anyone at any time. In the early 90s, an epidemic of mental disorder was sweeping America and Britain. As last week's program showed, it had been uncovered by a new system for identifying disorders. Psychiatry had been attacked for relying on the personal and fallible judgment of psychiatrists. And instead, a new objective method based on checklists had been invented. These listed only the objective symptoms and deliberately did not inquire into why individuals felt an anxiety. In the late 80s, nationwide surveys had revealed an incredible picture. More than 50% of Americans suffered from mental disorders. <laughs> but at the very same time, the drug companies had announced that they had created a new type of drug called an SSRI, which they claimed targeted the circuits inside the brain that were causing these malfunctions. The SSRIs were marketed under names like Prozac. What they did was alter the amounts of serotonin that flowed across the circuit connections within the brain and they readjusted the chemicals to normal levels. And then all of a sudden, here comes uh, somebody that says, OK, now try these on, try this Prozac on. And I tried it on, and for the first time in my life, I went, whoa, is this the way reality really is? Well, this pill can solve all of your problems. It's called Prozac, and it may mean the end of depression as we know it. I've been taking Prozac for two years. And what difference has that made? Brilliant. Oh, she's yes. smiling, eyes <laughs> light her. And I feel as if I'm back to normal. You feel normal? Yeah. And you feel a better person? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Through treatment, I learned to function with my disorder, and now life is so much more enjoyable. Life is so much better now that I've gotten treatment, and I feel like I've got my OCD under control, and it feels really great. A better life is waiting. What now began to happen was that millions of people who had been diagnosed by the checklist as disordered went to psychiatrists to be medicated. The result was liberation from anxiety on a wide scale. But in the process, the checklist became a powerful and seemingly objective guide for people as to what should be their normal feelings and what was abnormal. And a number of leading psychiatrists began to argue that what they were actually doing was creating a static society in which human beings were adjusted by the medication so they fitted to an agreed normal type defined by the checklist. People come to me all the time asking me to medicate them. The implication behind that was that human beings, like all other animals, have a particular ideal model. It had a machine-like quality to it. We know what the model should be. And they asked the medications, they asked of me to give them medications that would, would push them back to this particular model they have. An unrealistic model, but a very static model of man as machine. Has it worked? You look very dubious, my friend. Apparently it has. Um, I can't help being suspicious of it. I don't think she's the woman I married. Why? I think she's changed. In what way? I don't know. I don't know, but there's, there's, something, there's something there that is, that is different. OK, she's not the woman you married. Is she a better woman? No, she's different. They imagined that they might live in a world where there would never be a worry, not even a grief, where 
never did uh, conflict, concern, the alt worry over alternatives make possible the kinds of progress that we've seen in the past. But then, the man who had created the checklist system admitted that it might actually be leading millions of people to believe that they were disordered when they were not. The checklists added up only observable symptoms. They deliberately excluded any understanding of the patient's life. Because of this, he said, it confused genuine psychological disorder with normal human feelings of sadness and anxiety, and that this was happening on a wide scale. All this was being said by one of America's most powerful psychiatrists, Dr. Robert Spitzer. What happened is that we made uh, estimates of prevalence of mental disorders totally descriptively, which out consi without considering that many of these conditions might be normal reactions, which are not really disorders. That, that's the problem, because we were not looking at the context in which those conditions developed. So you have effectively medicalized much of ordinary human sadness, fear, ordinary experiences, you've medicalized them. Uh, I think we have, to some extent. How serious a problem it is, uh, is, is not known. I don't know if it's 20%, 30%, I don't know. But that's, that's a considerable amount if, it's, if it is 20 or 30%. What was happening was that large parts of normal human experience, grief, disappointment, loneliness, were all being reclassified as medical disorders. In the process, a new system of management was emerging. The drugs took away those complex and difficult feelings and made the individuals happier. But they also made them simpler beings, more easy to predict and manage and closer to the machine-like creatures at the heart of the economic models. By using checklists of symptoms about emotions, you have gone out and confused normal human responses to, to life with mental disorder and therefore created an illusion of a vast epidemic, a medicalized illusion and obviously a situation where you medicalize is a situation where your focus will not be on social change, it will be on controlling individuals to fit in properly. That's, that's the subtle and overall danger here, that it could serve our kind of social economic systems needs in a way in which we become more, more efficient but less human. What the psychiatrists had discovered was that an objective system based on numbers had led them into a trap. The numbers had imposed their own narrow logic on how we thought and felt about ourselves. 